We all grew up with our favorite martial arts movies calling us on the mat to become the next Karate Kid, Steven Seagal, or Jackie Chan. It brought countless of people to training as starting a question. Did it bring the right people in? Hi, my name is Rokas, and I welcome you to a brief martial arts video where we take a closer look at various martial arts and martial arts phenomena. I've heard countless of people tell me how they were inspired to start martial arts in the 80s after watching the original Karate Kid. How many people wanted to do a split because of Jean-Claude Van Damme? And if not for Steven Seagal, potentially Aikido would not be known to most of the world this day. Yet with all the flow of people that various martial arts schools received because of these movies and personas, can it be that this also hides a more negative side to it? While some of the Karate Kid people still practice martial arts up to this day, many people come with a false expectation to martial arts schools because of the difference of movie versus reality. We all want to be the hero of our story, and we all want to achieve the power which is displayed in the movies. Yet a movie lasts only a couple of hours, during which a nobody becomes the best fighter in the world. While various martial arts movies show part of the training, it doesn't tell us that we were not all born with a talent for fighting, and that it needs countless of hours of training in order to achieve any serious result. Thus many who come to a dojo or a gym inspired after a movie drop out almost instantly after they see the reality of how training is rather than how it's shown in movies. Still. That ends mostly as a positive phenomenon for the schools of martial arts, because there will be always a dropout rate, yet some people, as mentioned before, stay there for long, and they might have never come in if not for the movies they've seen. Yet there's something else that is troubling here in terms of movies presenting a different type of reality. Of course, Hollywood and film industry is all about money. It needs its fancy kicks and spins and choreography, and it's something great to watch. Yet there is a hidden danger here. To begin with, we can start by looking at Aikido and Steven Seagal as an example. On the rise of Steven with the movie Above the Law, which was released in 1988, the flow of people to Aikido dojos was tremendous. And of course, there was a big dropout rate because of the previously mentioned movie training versus the reality of real training, yet there was something else. In Above the Law, as much as in most, if not all, for Steven Seagal's movies, he is invincible because of his Aikido. Thus, Aikido is presented because of his portrayal of it as a badass, kick-ass, ultimate martial art. Some people end up coming to dojos expecting to see that in a regular Aikido training. They expect to become the next badass because apparently that's what made Steven Seagal quote-unquote so. Yet when people come to an Aikido dojo that is quite far from the reality that is presented to them there. Of course, maybe you could say that they should have went directly to a Steven Seagal school itself and like his own personal style of Aikido, which is more aggressive. Yet even so, many people came to Aikido with a false promise that it does work as in the movies, and as long as they train it long enough, it'll be as effective as in the movies, walking out with false confidence that they could deal with an actual assault if that moment came to be true until it may be too late. While times have changed, and as we have internet, more and more ineffective martial arts are being exposed, and Aikido has lost a lot of respect and trust from general martial arts world because of it, but even to this day, I have people coming into my dojo wanting to do Aikido because they want to be the next Steven Seagal. So the myth is still carried on, even against the odds, further developing ludicrous expectations. This false claim even exists still in some Aikido instructors, which doesn't allow them to face the truth and start changing and adapting Aikido to more modern times, or simply letting off the claims that it is highly effective. True. Yet Aikido is not the only victim to this. For a moment, let's take a look at Kung Fu movies. The movie Yip Man, starring Donnie Yen, released in 2008, was a highly successful movie watched by millions of people. And while Yip Man is a legendary martial arts figure, and the movie is truly engaging, not everyone can see beyond the entertainment side of it. While in reality Bing Chen these days is starting to suffer from a similar fate to Aikido, of having a lack of actual effectiveness compared to its claims in a modern UFC combat martial arts world, as a regular person witnesses Donnie Yen taking on multiple karateka at once, and defeating them without taking any damage, guess how many people, unfortunately, take that as a real possibility. It would cause me no surprise to hear how many Ding Chen schools benefited from this movie, and even more so, some of them potentially presenting it as an example that it is a fully functional martial art in these circumstances. Insert your joke about a muck dojo here. And then, the movie Yip Man even went further in the following parts, showing him dealing with the champion boxer, or even Mike Tyson himself in the third episode. Nevertheless, this movie is not the only one who's guilty of this. We have hundreds and thousands of kung fu, karate, etc. movies of an invincible warrior kicking the butts of numerous opponents at once and barely getting hurt. And while this is part of the movie business, it is 
just entertainment, it brings a lot of false expectations which need to be openly addressed or to be expected that unaddressed can only continue to build a tremendous amount of delusion which already exists in the martial arts world. While with the current days, MMA is becoming more and more popular, even the UFC fights shown across the globe can sometimes make people forget that while highly effective, it is still a sport and it doesn't often address the real common questions of self-defense such as multiple opponents, objects, weapons, and various psychological aspects that go with the actual self-defense situation. Some of the more recent movies such as Never Back Down or Red Belt with Chiu Etel, Edgy of Four do introduce modern martial arts and some reality aspects of it. Still, they give us the story of someone invincible or in one of the cases because of a bit of some training becoming the best or the receiving of a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Red Belt because, uh, well, you tell me in the comments why he received it at the end. Oh, sorry, spoilers um, before, well, the movie is not about that anyway, just, just watch it still, yeah. So we're left to consider this phenomenon and to ask ourselves, can we do something about it? Of course, let us benefit from the flow of people that come from watching martial arts movies, but also let's ask ourselves if we should continue expanding the myth of supreme martial arts or becoming the best with little training, or if we should openly address this question more often than not and support the martial arts world to evolve into a clear-headed, realistic world where it really belongs to. Or do we really want to keep developing the ludicrous side of martial arts and sometimes even forget ourselves what reality is? What do you think about this question? Do you think the martial arts movie myths should continue to live and be untouched? Do you think this question should be addressed more often? Let us know in the comments. Also, remember to share and like this video to spread this message in question. If you want more of these types of videos, subscribe to know first when they come out. This was Rokos Leo, and I'll see you on the virtual mat again soon.